What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you watch this short video you will know that I got stranded with the big boy on the side of the road and I couldn't start the bike I had to call a recovery. It turns out I had some sort of mechanical failure so as soon as I got home started pulling apart the engine so I could figure out what was going on. So in today's video I'm going to tell you exactly what happened with the big boy and why I'm now stuck without a bike. Alright everybody, so as you can see the bike is standing over here and I've taken the top end of the motor off so I knew that the sound kind of sounded like it was a mechanical failure and when I cranked on the kickstart I could do that by hand so I figured there was some sort of loss of compression so my first thought of diagnostics was to check the valve. So as you can see the motor does spin freely which is a good thing. Um, Obviously I don't want to do that too much because there's nothing in there at the moment so there's no point and I don't want to cause any more damage. So here I've pulled off the valve cover and um, everything seems a little bit okay. I'm a little bit worried by this point over here which is a little bit worn down by comparison to that point as you can see. So that is a little bit of a concern for me so... Yeah, not quite sure what would have caused that, but probably it might have happened during the, uh, the catastrophic failure or it might have been a pre-existing problem. Now if I take this head and I hold it up to the light, you can kind of see there's light coming through. It's not a great angle. This one is a lot more pronounced, so if I do that, there you can see there's quite a big gap over there. So uh, valves are definitely bent which is uh, not ideal, not ideal at all. The uh, rocker arms seem to be pretty much parallel with each other. I can't really find much bending in there, so I think they're okay. And the rockers still have got plenty of free movement, as you can see. However, what I did notice here was that the piston itself does look like it has made contact with the valves. But what's interesting is that there's a mark there and there from the valve and a mark there and there from the valve. So once I got this end off, oh, and it, it doesn't move. So it's definitely a problem, right? So this is what it looks like underneath. So these are for the rocker arm. These cams basically sit on this cam over here. Uh, over there, there's a cam, and then as that thing spins around, you'll see there's like there's a key on there. So that pushes these two rocker arms, one that way, one that way. Those control the valves. You guys know how engines work, but anyway, maybe you don't. So let me just explain it. And um, this is what the piston looks like. So you can see that um, all the bottom end of the piston has been taken away. You can see there's been a couple of knocks after the uh, failure took place um, I was moving at about 100 k's an hour when this happened so I was on the throttle and then it was just like and I lost all power in the motor uh, as soon as I pulled in the clutch there was no power on the motor and so I knew there was something wrong I tried cranking it a couple of times so you can see I've done quite a good bit of knocking but you can see the piston rings are on the inside of the piston which is definitely not where they're supposed to be so definitely the failure uh, happened on the piston. Um, I'm not sure if this is the sleeve of the piston or if this is part of the piston, but you can see the fragmentation is absolutely insane. That's broken, that's cracked all over there, and yeah, it's just it's a whole bloody story. So this piston is pretty pretty fuss. Um, but what's also a bit of a concern is if you can see here there's quite a bit of a gap over here but then on one of the edges you can actually see I can't see it now obviously I've moved it but there's like I think there's pieces of metal wedged inside this gap and so that may have caused some scratching to the sleeve so quite a bit of catastrophic damage I'm going to be taking the head to well this is head this is the what is this this is the block 
I'm going to be taking this to an engineering shop on Monday or Tuesday in the week. I've got to phone around and find a place that can do some repairs and see if they can spec what kind of work I'm going to need to be doing on here. Hopefully, I don't have to do any boring. Uh, hopefully, I can just do a piston and a sleeve and uh, everything will be A-OK. -okay. So that is the situation with the big boy now i cannot entirely discredit big boy themselves for the damage that has happened here because those of you that have watched my channel know that i do ride a bit hard and i do ride a lot in the upper rev range of the engine so that kind of wear can happen on a bike yes the bike is built with cheaper quality parts which might have been partially a cause of the catastrophic failure another problem is that this bike sits at about 8000 rpm at 120 k an hour which is highway speeds so if i'm keeping up with traffic on the highway because i don't like moving slower than the traffic then it means i am putting a lot of strain on the engine so that might partially be what um, what the cause or what has led up to this level of damage. Look, I've done 21,000 kilometers on this bike and I've done a lot of it on-road, off-road, highways, cities, you name it. I've done all sorts of riding with this bike. So, yeah, it's not to say that the bike is at fault. The gearing could be better suited to street riding because I do a lot of street riding. But I also do a lot of dirt riding, so I prefer to run a big sprocket on the back wheel. Maybe I should have gone down from a 50 to a 46 sprocket or even smaller, like a 42. But this is how I've been running the bike. So I can't purely blame Big Boy for having a bike that's fallen apart. Maybe the material is a bit to blame, but I have also got a bit of a hard and aggressive riding style. So that might also be part of the problem. I am, like I said, going to try and get this thing salvaged. If I can get good specs on the pistons and I can find high quality forged pistons, then that's the move that I'm going to be going for because I believe that a forged piston will be able to hold up better. I'm also definitely, definitely going to be considering going with a smaller toothed sprocket um, as, as a backup. And on days when I actually plan on riding on dirt roads and actually going on dirt, then I'll switch out to the 50 tooth sprocket just because the gearing like that is better for, for dirt road. It's much better to have nice torque on hand when you're riding on the dirt than, but when you're on the street and when you're trying to get highway speeds, having a smaller tooth sprocket means you can keep the RPM down, which means that kind of failure won't happen. So yeah, guys. Um, I know I wanted to do a standing parking practice video for this week, but uh, that's a bit of an impractical impossibility. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you aren't already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. If you want to become a Patreon and support this channel, uh, do me a favor. Check the links in the description or scan the QR code and subscribe to become a Patreon. You'll get early access to some of my videos. And I'm also trying to keep... Uh, updates and news on there as frequently as I possibly can. This logo shirt that I'm wearing, uh, it's a pad printed tee. If you'd like to buy one, go check out shop.casualriders.co.za and uh, go and buy a logo tee. I still sell the hand painted ones, but these are much better quality. So go ahead, support the channel, <laughs> help me fix this motor and uh, go get yourself a t-shirt. Remember guys, life is going to throw a tone at you like this thing does, but uh, Whatever happens, don't look down, look ahead. And until next time, ride safe.